morning, everyone. Happy and in North North Central Pennsylvania, uh, happy snow day again. Well, it, okay, snow day as in it's snowing again. It's snowing. But it now, snowing. I don't even know if snow days exist anymore. So they do. My my stepsons have a snow day now. They they're closed. Okay. So some have gone right. virtual. Some districts are canceling. So, but it is just another snowy day in Pennsylvania. In the I dinner. love it. Yes. I love snow. Love it. Makes me feel so good. <sighs> but Jim, how has your week been? What have you been doing to feel less overbooked? <laughs> I have to think. <laughs> um, no, actually, like I said, it's been a, as far as work wise, it's been a very engaging, busy training kind of week. Uh, so like I come home in the evenings and it's like, I think I've been taking a little more self care in the evenings because I've been tired, just tired, just spending time with my, my wife and the dogs and the weekend. Um, I got outside a little bit this weekend. So just tried to, cause there was a couple of days where it actually got sunny and the temperature was actually like in the thirties. So I was actually mm -hmm. outside and just trying to go for walks again and just, just uh, spend some time outside taking that vitamin D. So there you um, go. otherwise that was, that was it. So, um, you know, doing great. Otherwise, how about you? What have you done to feel less overbooked? Well, Jim, I have to agree with you because I feel like everything has ramped up a lot, um, the past like couple of weeks, um, which is okay. Right. I think you have different times of the year that are bad, but, um, I will say my self-care wheel has not been the greatest probably on my fault, but that's okay. It happens. Um, but I am excited. Um, this week we're at the virtual Pete and C conference. So that's why I'm wearing my KTI swag. It's Tuesday. So we wear our purple on Tuesday, which um, if you don't know what that is, reach out. It's a fantastic professional growth opportunity. Um, and I actually, you know what? This weekend I did go ice skating. Nice. Yeah. For local? Yes, yes, yes. One of our friends, actually a colleague, um, built an ice skating rink outside and like froze a block of ice and has a bunch of ice skates. So we went ice skating. Um, so that was cool. We were the only ones, so it was social distance, obviously, but mm -hmm. it was cool. Something different, something to try. But I know I'm I'm actually starting to be I'm starting to itch like to um maybe just take a day, take a morning, do something for me again, like just to go out for a hike. I don't know why I'm itching to go for a hike. Like just something out in the snow or just I don't know, just something different. Like I'm just yeah. I'm starting to maybe like I said is it spring fever am I ready for the, the spring I don't know at this point you know what I mean but it's just uh I'm starting to just feel like that itch where I just want to do something different yes yes oh because we've also been doing the same things for almost a year now like I'm itching to travel you know me I'm a I'm yes. a I love my world travel yes it's killing me but it's all right yes. Good. We're yes. learning new things. So that's right. That's right. So, all right. So, wow. Um, okay. True disclaimer, Jim and I are going to tell you all, but we need to have a little bit of grace. Please be patient with us because it has been so busy. And the chapter four was so in depth. We were really like, you know, processing it. Um, we did not get to read five, six, and seven. Instead of rushing through it and lying to our people, to all of you, we said, we're going to be honest with you guys because it's life and we're human. So we are only going to discuss chapter four today, but we promise we'll make five, six, yes. seven up to you. Absolutely. And I said to go along with Becky and I felt bad because I'm like, I got so into four and then I went to start reading five. So I had chapter four read like, out, at, like, early, in, like early on and I got to start reading. I thought, okay, last night. It was a long day of training. I was up really early. I traveled a little bit yesterday. So I got home later yesterday and I took my, my, my jet, my, my two-year-old dog jet and in, into the bedroom with me to start reading last night. And it was probably about 8.30 last night. 
And um, he just wanted some like just uh, TLC, you know, TLC, tender, loving care. So I'm petting Jet last night. He's laying right alongside of me. And I said, come on, buddy, I'm going to do some reading. I would start reading chapter five. I'm petting him at the same time. And I don't know what happened, but it was like 8, 30, 20 and nine last night. My eyes at, at, must have gotten heavy because next thing I know it was 10. <laughs> my wife came in and woke me up and I dozed right off, fell asleep. So it was like, I was... I was tired. So I actually, I guess that was another way of taking some self-care last night. So there you go. Got to listen to your body. So, yep. So that's where I, I felt guilty. And I came to Becky this morning and I'm like, I have a confession to make. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So thank you all for being patient with us, but we are going to start off um, on page 63. Um, yes. That's the first thing Jim and I both said, like this quote, we just needed to hear it today and we're going to read it here. So Okay. It's okay if you don't know what to feel, if you don't know what you want, and if you can't figure things out as you go. It's okay to not want something you work so hard on getting after realizing it wasn't what you thought it was. It's okay to change your mind, to make mistakes, to walk away from someone you once loved, from something that once meant the world to you. It's okay because this is your life, your cause, your body, your beliefs, your mind, your heart, and your feelings. And you don't need validation from no one other than you. And I hope it doesn't take you a lifetime to realize that. R.M. Drake. Wow. Holy Hannah. I read that, I read that quote and I'm like, you know, at times I would feel guilty because maybe it's the way something's ended or maybe if... I'm thinking like if I made an impression where like, let's say if I transition and move on with my life and, you know, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I hope I didn't upset this person. I hope I didn't, you know what I mean? And you know what? And it just gets to the point where I've learned it's just validation. You know what? And the choices I make, as long as, I mean, like I feel, I feel content and I know if I do not feel that regret, do you know what I mean? And I'm moving on and like how I can do to continue to support others and take care of me. Mm -hmm. I should not have any regrets. And I read this, I read this quote and not needing that validation. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I love yeah. it. Like, wow, Mandy, like perfect quote to choose for getting into engagement because how often yes. are the reasons of disengagement because of everything in this quote? Like there are often times where I'm like, I have no idea what I want. Like what direction am I going in now? And I feel like I need to find that direction or create it. Um, and so it was, it was good to hear that. Um, and then the other thing that said, uh, I remember like, not that I, I live for my parents or anything like that, but you know, when your family is close and, and you want to make them happy. I remember in my twenties, you know, that one, I don't know when it happens, but that feeling where I realized, Hey, this is my life. And I need to live it for me. And there's decisions that I make still that my parents are like, Becky, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah, but this is my life. Like, and so I remember when I made that shift in life and it was like a whole weight lifted off my shoulders, not saying there's times where I go back to my parents and say, okay, you're right. But when we start realizing that this is our life, um, and hopefully sooner than later, like, while still being respectful to others. I think it's super refreshing. Um, and so if you needed to hear that quote today, we hope that you, you know, you heard it and processed it. You can pause it and replay it and listen, but fantastic quote. So, and, uh, and again, it is on page 63. Mm -hmm. So when you have the book and if you already have it, you can uh, go back again to page 63 and um, it is there for you. And and like you said, you said, like, as far as your parents, I felt the same way, uh, family, friends. Um, I feel like, honestly, I think within the last couple of years, and I think specifically now in this last year, maybe even since the summer, like, I feel like, and I'm 43 again, I'm telling you, 43. Birthday. You know, birthday, but uh, I'm honestly feeling like, you know what, I've, I own, I've own, I own it. Simply, I own it. You know what, I feel more content and more ready to, um, to move on, not feel regrets and just be content and happy with me. Self love mm -hmm. myself, love others. I've, I've admitted it that I I spend so much time always trying to uplift and motivate others. 
that I'm the complete opposite with myself. So by doing this book series with Overbooked with Becky and reading so many quotes and just getting into more, um, more of the uh, podcasts, um, mm -hmm. from books that I'm starting to read and just really owning and who I am. And if you cannot love and accept me for who I am. Um, you, um, I, you know what, I thank you, I respect you, but you know what, I'm gonna continue living my life how I want and, um, you know, just be the very best me that I possibly can. And, you know, that's it. Yeah. So. And I wonder sometimes too, with the pandemic, while I know it's, it's rough, I'm wondering if that's a silver lining in it all because it's forced us to slow down and stop and think. And this chapter, you know, it really starts with, I love the analogy of the hot air balloon um, and the tethers mm -hmm. that ground us and help us face, you know, adversity. And while, you know, some of us that have maybe a strong support group, there are others that don't, right? Um, and so it forces us to think about like, what are our tethers? And it goes into our core beliefs. And I said it to you, Jim, this morning, and this is why it may have taken me a, a while to process this um, chapter, but it goes back to our core beliefs and back to our find our why. And I don't know yet if I'm settled and content, I don't want to say content, but I'm happy with my core beliefs yet. I feel like they're still evolving, which again, they always evolve, but I don't know if I have that, hey, yeah, this is my core beliefs. Like I know she mentions on you know, page 67, I feel like I want to be who I say I am. I need to live the ideas that I write on my blog because she's a blogger. Um, I, I'm the same way. Like if I believe this, I want to live it right in everything I do. It goes back to our energy best. It goes back to find your why. And I know there are things, but I don't know if I've ever really written it on paper and been okay with, you know, how it's written on paper. So I think I'm still grappling with that, which is okay. You know what? As I say, too, this is a lifelong process, a lifelong journey. Like I said, my word this year is journey. And, you know, what I just said before, you know what, that's part along along with my journey. And I said, and Becky, you know what, sometimes just throughout life, it, our beliefs do change. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to have just one set belief. And is that okay? Yes, it is. And you know, like I said, when just we just taking these quotes from Mandy and kind of going back to when we uh, did our very first book, you know, book study as well with Simon Sinek. All right. Right. The, and your why it's just going back to that again. You know what? Finding our purpose, finding our journey, my journey. I say it again. And <laughs> just, you know what? Just taking it, moving on. And I again, I still reflect back to the energy bus. And, you know, like all of these are just involved, like evolving for me. Um, like I said, working hard, re-engagement, you know what? It's just part of the journey. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say if those, those bumps in the road, those potholes in the road, you know what I mean? Or like I said, maybe like let's say this morning, a snowstorm, you know, the roads are icy, there's snow covered, uh, slow down a little bit at times, be just kind of just watch out a little bit more and you know what, just continue right along. So again, another analogy. So, Look at you, you're just killing it with the analogies. So I also no. thought, you know, uh, Jim, on page 70, again, wake up call from Mandy. Thank you. Uh, the re-engagement was on me, which was the most important realization I came to. And you and I have spoken about this yes. as well. How many times? I don't know what just happened. It sounded like snow just fell through. But, um, you know, how many times we have to own up? to, hey, this is on me. It's not up to my administrator. It's not up to my boss. It's not up to my husband, wife, friends, like my parents. This is up to me. And so even when we talk about our life process and our personal growth, that's all on us. Um, we get to choose. And so she mentions here on 71, the other reason was that I was taking on every project and opportunity that came my way because I had no direction or purpose. Oftentimes, like we rely, and I, I feel like I've sort of been doing this recently, like rely on my, you know, my boss, my supervisor to give me the direction or purpose when we can also set our direction and purpose. And so, you know, I encourage all of us to, to really think about that, own up to, okay, we need to invest in this and then invest in what you get to create that, right? Um, yes. So what and along that journey as well to remember to take time for our own self-care as well so that we can continue to 
um, to progress and just live, um, you know what I mean? Finding that direction and purpose, you know what I mean? And what's, what sparks us? What sparks our fire? What reignites our flame? Okay. Ooh. That we do. And um, like I said, I think we're finding that out for both of us more and more. I hope all of you right. are well. Page 73 was another quote that I liked. My purpose may not be yours. You may not agree with my purpose. Both are okay. What makes my purpose so impactful for me is that I know I believe it so fully that I don't need anyone else to agree with me. I don't need validation here. That's how I know it's truly mine. You know what I mean? It's just like, again, you're not trying to chase to be accepted. Finding your own self-love, your own self-acceptance finding your beliefs and your purpose and feeling content with it, like feeling happy with it. All right. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I just think that is so, so wonderful. You know what I mean? And it's just it's such a good feeling. Yeah. And I, it's not easy, right? Like there are no. days that we don't have, it's not like we're in self-love mode 24 no. seven. Like we're not that kind of a unicorn. Like no. people think I'm like, Oh, <laughs> Jim and Becky, we want like whatever you're like, what Kool-Aid you have? Like, no, like we struggle too. When we, you know, before we record, we always sit and we process everything and check in on each other. Um, yes. But that's what makes it beautiful is the journey of life. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's not easy. You know, you know so. there was something about even like having that support, your partner, like it's like, you know, like you said, you ha I have my, my, my personal partner, my wife, you know what I mean? Who is like my best friend and, you know, vice versa. And she knows me like a book, you know what I mean? And that could be a good or bad thing because it's like, I cannot get away with anything with her. She can read right through me and you know what? And I'm, I'm grateful for that because she helps steer me in that right direction at times. You know what I mean? Especially let's say if I'm starting to feel that self doubt, that self you know what I mean? Like those times when I really did not feel like I loved myself at all and putting myself down and she would like, you know what I mean? Instead of trying to uplift me, she's to the point, you know what, Jim, she said, you know what, you're going to do this. You know what, then that's your choice. But she said, I love you and that's it. But you know what, you have to be the one in control to love yourself. And you know what, it was like, wow. So yeah. it was, again, there I am trying to just find my purpose and realize who are what is, um, what's bringing me down and what's uplifting me? Mm -hmm. And it's the things that are bringing me down, okay, you know what? Okay, okay. And you know what? I move on. Do you know what I right. mean? And not mm -hmm. trying to let it control me. And then focus on what is uplifting me, focus on what makes me feel happy, what makes me feel good and helps me want to continue to grow. And then when I come here to work and I work with you, Becky, you know, you <laughs> Yeah. a motivator and, and you know what something she'll throw at you know throw at me like a quote or like just a saying and you know like Jim what do you think and I'm like it sounds great you know <laughs> me thinking in a different direction and you're helping to inspire me in that positive way and um you know so then well, I thank you Jim you're very welcome so like I said when I try to I try to work with others the same way and like for example yesterday I was in a training I was in an all-day training yesterday I got to work with someone that I haven't seen in about a year since before COVID and someone else that I worked with again a couple of years ago. And you know what? We had such a great uh, bond. You know, we made such a great positive rapport that mm -hmm. throughout the training, it was wonderful. And we spent some time after the training yesterday to talk about what makes us feel good, what makes us feel uh, motivated and happy, you know, talking about our professional and personal lives and how we can continue to grow. And it's kind of like he inspired me. And I think in some ways I might have inspired him. So, but I'm um, sure you did. So, but he was like asking me, Jim, so what kind of professional development have you been doing this year? And I'm like, here, let me show you the website on our IU uh, website. So, um, you know, so it was just kind of like, it was just such a wonderful opportunity. And I left yesterday and I just thought, I feel good. Yeah. Like, feeling a purpose yesterday. Right. You know what I mean? And I was just, and it made, I've thought about it first thing this morning when I woke up during the night and I woke up one time during the night because I couldn't sleep and then I got back to sleep, but I thought <laughs> of that and I thought, okay, I'm, you know what? This is good. This You're is doing good. what you should be doing, right? That's At right. At this Bex. point in so, time. And I, I, said, and we I kinda, 
well, you brought up, I don't mean to cut you off. You brought up a really good point before you keep going here. Like you have your wife and not everyone has their a significant other. Not everyone might be in a relationship where you have that with a significant other. And so like a healthy relationship. So, so it's just important to have someone, right? Yes. It's just someone, it could be a friend, it could be a colleague, but it's important. And, and, um, I can't reiterate that more. And I wanted to sort of like clarify that too. Um, and we have them all in different parts of our lives. So. Mm -hmm. And it's just so important if it's a friend or like you said, if it was a spouse or just you know, like, who can you always turn to and who's usually like and vice versa. So, right. Um, I just, and then just going in real quick, like, and, you know, Mandy went into the core beliefs on page 76, 77. I reflected through my blog. So she, of course she uses the blog. I develop a professional learning network. I created my own professional learning opportunities. I develop stronger connections. Mm -hmm. I look opportunities that would satisfy my purpose. I paid attention to all the feels. Mm -hmm. All the feels, like how am I feeling? You know what I mean? It's and right. just into that. Um, and then purpose. I support educators because I know that when I support educators, I am best supporting students. Yeah, she really, she's really grounded in that and lives by that. And then she has her core beliefs right, right underneath that. Um, yes. Yeah. It's so. best for all learners. Teach people what we ask them to do. Meet the behaviors we wish to see. Start with empathy. Take responsibility for your professional learning. Support educators' mental health too. Surround yourself with people who make you feel better. Focus on purpose. Again, hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> yeah, so, and and if you, I mean, when we talk to her, um, I she'll be the first to admit this hasn't happened overnight, right? It takes no. time. So we're excited you're on this journey with us. Thank you for tuning in. Um, keep, you know, throughout this week, think about those core beliefs that you have that we started with find your why and, and sort of share them out with us. Um, think about it, uh, mm -hmm. but take some time to let it sit and feel all those feels like Mandy. Thank said. you all so much for listening to us this morning. And we kind of just dove off into several different areas this morning. So yeah. it's wonderful. And hope you all have a wonderful day. And, uh, See you if you're in North Central PA, enjoy the snow. Get out there and make some snow angels or snowmen. So yes, all right. See you guys Take next care, week. Everyone. Have a great day.